In this video we're going to discuss MPLS or multi-protocol label switching. Okay, so here's PE2 show IP interface brief. At the moment we don't have an IP address configured on gigabit 02, that interface is shut down. Show IP VRF, there are no VRFs configured on PE2. Show IP VRF on PE1 shows us the two VRFs configured. So what I'll do is copy the VRFs from PE1 to PE2. So I'll simply copy that across. Show IP VRF now on PE2 shows us the two VRFs, but no interfaces are configured in those VRFs. Show IP VRF over here shows us the two interfaces that are in the various VRFs. So this is the configuration of Gigabit01 on PE1. We're gonna do something similar on PE2. So IP VRF forwarding, blue. Notice the IP address is removed and the current OSPF neighbor relationship goes down. That is a relationship to CE3 or router 8 in our topology. So we need to put the IP address back 172.16.2.1. And then we need to do something similar on gigabit 02. IP VRF forwarding green and I'll put the same IP address on. Now you don't have to use the same IP addresses. I'm only showing you that here to show you that it's possible to do that. So notice we have the same IP address configured on multiple interfaces, but that's allowed because they're in different VRFs. So what do we still need to do? We need to configure our OSPF instances show run on this side doesn't show us OSPF. We have a global version of OSPF here and we have BGP configured, but we don't have OSPF for the customers. So we need to configure those. So router OSPF to VRF blue to keep it consistent. Router ID 172.16.2.1 router OSPF 3VRF green, and I'll configure a router ID once again manually, such as the following. We need to configure OSPF on the interfaces in the areas, so interface gigabit 01, IP OSPF 2, area 0, and then on the gigabit 02 interface, we need to use OSPF process three. So show run shows us our VRFs, shows us our global interface to the core, shows us our two interfaces to the customers in the relevant VRFs, and we are running OSPF on those interfaces. There are the OSPF instances for the VRFs, Here's global OSPF, here's BGP, IP version four, so global BGP, and here's VPN v4 BGP. So show IP VRF. There are our VRFs configured, and the interfaces are now showing up. So show IP OSPF neighbor. We've got a neighbor relationship to a core router, and we've got a neighbor relationship on gigabit 01, that's a relationship to CE3. So show IP route of VRF blue. We have got a route advertised in that VRF. So ping VRF blue 8.8.8, .8 that works. Do we have any routes in the green VRF? No, we don't. So we need to check the configuration of CE4. So it looks like CE4 has lost its configuration. I have rebooted GNS3. 
since I recorded the previous videos. So I'll quickly set up this router. It's gonna have the same IP addresses on the ethernet interface as the other routers. Create a loopback here of 9.9.9 slash .9 .9 32 mask. I'll enable OSPF on all interfaces in area zero. So what we should see is we should see routes appear. So the neighbor relationship has been established and there is the route now in the green VRF. So if we wanna ping that, we need to specify the green VRF and ping the right IP address. Now these CE routers are still not learning routes from the PEs. We have to redistribute OSPF into BGP and redistribute BGP into OSPF to allow routes learned through OSPF to be advertised through BGP from one side of the network to the other. So the last step is to redistribute our routing protocols and our connected interfaces into BGP. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.